if there exists higher dimensions, what are they like? And can they be experienced for oneself? Because no matter how many times someone else would talk about supposed other dimensions, then they might be of comfort to the listener. They might give you something to ponder over, to be in awe about, to be like, that sounds amazing. But without the actual experience, then it might still be not as powerful and as meaningful as it could be. So today I wanted to briefly share just my experience so far on these matters. And we will talk about the astral world. Because it is the astral world that we are confronted with after physical death. And therefore it is very important to consider this, to study this, to contemplate it for yourself so that you are more aware, more prepared, you could say, for what is waiting for us all. Because the physical body will eventually turn back to dust, which is another way of saying it will become one with the elements of the earth again. It is like we have borrowed this physical body in order to function on this planet, but that is about it. Yet if we only identify with the body itself, we erroneously think and assume that we are more limited than we truly are. Now this needs spiritual awareness in order to be properly grasped, and anyone that is lacking spiritual awareness will have difficulty accepting this whole idea. They have difficulty to accept that there is something beyond the grave. To them, the grave is the finality of their existence. And again, it makes total sense. If you only identify with the body, then it makes sense that, well, when I die, then it must be all over. There's nothing left there. Like everything came to an end, there's nothing for me to experience because now I'm in the ground. That's sort of black and white saying that if you truly believe you're only just your body, well, makes sense. That is the conclusion you get to. But if you've had the experiences of walking in other realms, you can no longer deny that there is more to you than meets the eye. It's a nice saying because it holds a lot of spiritual truth. There truly is more to you than meets the physical eyes. You see, if you learn to look with the spiritual eye, you perceive totally different realities. You, see, you perceive even this current reality in a totally different way. It is through the spiritual eye you are able to see the oneness, the unity behind physicality within with and true physicality itself. So you actually learn to perceive this in a much more harmonious way than as a hostile universe like it is for so many. So the astral world experiences of mine, they came about initially. They come about for all of us unconsciously, here and now. Every now and then we have the experiences but we don't realize we have them. You could call them dreams perhaps, where you're like, well, I had such a fascinating dream, it was so bizarre, so out of this world, and then you leave it at that. So we all might have experiences of that sort of degree of awareness, but what actually happens when you're literally aware, like how you're aware right now, physically speaking, when you're walking through your living room, you are aware of everything that is around you. You know that the door that you use in order to get to your kitchen, you know where it is. And when you get close to it, you know to open it and to close it perhaps at will, everything. You don't just walk into it because you're aware. When you're normally asleep, you're not consciously aware. It's like you are aware but not consciously there. So you just go along with everything. You miss out on a great opportunity to explore other realms. So what happened to me when I was... In my early teens was I had this great desire and I can't entirely explain why that desire was there. It was just simply there in the depths of my heart. I wanted to know what lied beyond physical life as we know it. For some reason I could sense there is more to it. It's not just a hope like, oh, maybe there is more to it. No, I, it's like I could sense there is more to it. But yet for some reason I seem to lack, at least in this lifetime, the actual experience and awareness of what it is like in these other realms so i had this desire and i kept obsessing over it for months and months this was still my teenage years i was still going to school during the day but then in the evenings and then in the morning and the weekends when i was free i was very obsessed with this 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 whole mis mystery of the astral world as i started also reading about it i could sense 
this sounds familiar, but I can't quite grasp why it is familiar to me. So I would read stories about others that had similar experiences and that talked about techniques on how they claimed they could reach that state consciously to be aware in all the dimensions. So I kept, you know, indulging in these studies and these meditations for months on end and then finally something happened. And I was laying on bed. I do remember very distinctly telling someone after the event that that night when I fell asleep, it, it felt like something bursted from my heart. Like I almost like in, in some morbid way, I joked like it's like I got like a heart attack or something. Like it, it sounds bizarre and kind of crazy. And if I really did have one, well, you could reason. Well, that does sound very healthy, man. I better get that checked out. Well, at the time, you know, since I'm still here and functioning, I also didn't really see it as anything negative. I just realized that something weird. That's the only way I can describe it. something weird happened through the heart chakra and through it I was pulled out of my body. That's kind of literally how I would describe it in that moment of time. And I found myself in another world that was completely different than this place. But what I distinctly remember and every time I go there, even over the years, I've been there a couple of times. Every time I go there, I notice that there's a lot of peace. There's no worry, there's no fear, there's no hatred. And, and when it comes down to this spiritual body of ours, I notice it's very light, it's weightless. It doesn't feel like something you have to drag around, which is interesting because without us realizing it, physically speaking, it's like you constantly have to drag this body of flesh and blood around, actually. Uh, you know, you could put it on a scale and weigh the body. and it, Weights like 170 pounds or maybe more, like uh, depending on your height or maybe if you're overweight, you know, it, the numbers go up or it go down if you're underweight. But there's always a certain amount of weight you're carrying around while you're here physically speaking, where in the astral realms you don't experience weight in that matter at all. You experience total freedom, lightness, beauty. Everything looks 10 times, well, I might say infinitely more beautiful than the physical world. A forest is luminous. That's how I experience it. Luminous colors. Yet I could touch the plants and trees and they felt exactly how they would feel in the physical world. Yet I knew I was not here walking around with my physical body. I, that was asleep on a bed somewhere on planet Earth, somewhere in a little town. I was still a teenager. So it's this lightness, this beauty that the astral world actually is all about. Now when you go there for yourself, that is when you truly understand that there is more than just physicality. Not until this experience has occurred for yourself and you've been consciously aware of it occurring, will this make any sense? Because then you might say, well, this, this guy or this woman must have been hallucinating. This is, it must have been on drugs perhaps. Maybe they're lying about it. Maybe they're making this up. But I can only tell you I'm not making any of this up. Uh, these were parts of my experiences. Now one of the most wonderful aspects of this astral world is that things become in your total control as well. You can travel to any point of time instantly. So right now, if you think of your past, you have to exercise your memory and then you vaguely have some images flash through the mind if you think about your birthday when you were like 15 or something, like if you can still remember it, I hope you do. <laughs> Some people have a bad memory apparently, but assuming you're not like super old and also not suffering from bad memory, I'm, I'm sure you can remember it. So you use your memory to think back of it right now, for example, you think, what was that birthday about? What was I doing during that time of my life? And you have all these images flash through the mind. They're kind of vague, but that's how memory works when you're physically awake. But in the astral world, when you think back of the past, it instantly, instantly re it manifests itself around you. What I mean like that is that I would think of a birthday when I was there and it would instantly collapse the world around me and rebuild it up at the, uh, uh, instantly as well. Like it's so hard to describe this in, in human language. But I was then standing inside my home during a birthday I knew I had not too long ago and I could just perceive it all like a stranger would. 
So I could even see my physical self there standing there, but yet I was observing the whole event like a stranger, invisible to all of them. I could analyze the whole scene of my birthday spiritually, which is very fascinating. It's another thing about this astral world, another ability that one wields over there. So therefore it is actually nothing to fear to pass away. But where comes this idea of heaven and hell? Are they actually true? And if so, what are they truly about? Because there's so much misunderstanding about these terms as well. When people think of hell, they think of a very scary place. And then they might go as far as people, some people are condemned to hell forever and ever. You're going to be stuck there for all of eternity. But yet how can that be if all are the children of God? So what is this hell? What is this heaven? Well, ultimately, based on the experiences I've had so far with these astral dimensions, you come to the conclusion that a hell is also another aspect of the astral world, and heaven is as well. But it's like different layers, different states of consciousness. So the soul, if it is very negative, for whatever reason, if it's very pessimistic, it's very destructive, if it has expressed itself very negatively throughout its physical journey, where it was only focused on destruction, chaos, hurt, like the most despicable things you can think of, if, if that was its, the person's only focus, then once they pass away, because of the state of their own consciousness that they allowed themselves to dwell in during their lifetime, they will also experience pretty dark realms after physical death in the astral realms. So, this is a very important point that we want to grasp. If you can accept this, if you believe in this, if you have faith in this, you can work this out for yourself throughout your physical journey. And that is that the state of your consciousness is very important from the moment you pass away, physically speaking. So the more you have prepared yourself to develop your consciousness in a heavenly direction, to align it with heavenly things, to adjust yourself to heavenly attributes of character, noble behavioral patterns, if you start to develop them and learn to expand upon them over time, then in the astral world you will experience a wonderful heavenly realm. So you can actually dictate where you will end up after you die, based on how you have trained your consciousness during your physical journey. And most people dismiss this entirely. They don't stop and think about this at all. They just go along with everything throughout their lifetime and then they pass away without ever having really developed their lifetime. And because of this, most people are not great sinners. They haven't done insanely despicable things. They may have done stupid stuff and negative stuff and questionable things to a certain degree. But because they're also not inherently focused on total chaos and destruction only, they end up in a more, you know, you could say an astral realm where it's not extremely heavenly, but it's also not extremely hellish. It's like just, just sort of okay-ish, like that, that's literally how you could describe it because again of their state of consciousness. It's not developed very intensely towards the heavenly, but it's also not de developed very intensely towards the hellish behaviors either. So this is a great lesson we could learn for ourselves is to look at all the evilness that we might perceive in this world and realize these are all states of consciousness. Do I want to identify with such a state of consciousness? Well, you are free to do so, but you'll pay a, pay a price for it, not just physically, but also spiritually in the astral world. Or you could look at other spiritual teachers and examples you've seen throughout history. One of the greatest, of course, is Jesus Christ and others, that they have, how they have portrayed that behavior of his the idea of Christianity is to develop and to create the same behavioral patterns as Jesus Christ did, so that you can perceive heaven ultimately for yourself and enter into it, because you have adjusted your state of consciousness Christwards. So this is very important for you to understand if you want to have the most beautiful and divine meaningful experiences concerning the astral world and as long as a person 
does not have full understanding of this and kind of dabbles back and forth between the astral and physical realms, not knowing for sure what he or she wants to fully dedicate on. That also is part of this whole reincarnation cycle ultimately, which one day will lead you to an incarnation where you inherently want to seek the divine, the spiritual, the truth. And I've perceived in my own being that that is what happened to me on this current life journey, that that is the journey that I am on from the moment I was born. Many things have added up after contemplation to watch that end. I realize that God has prepared a lot of stuff over the decades for me to trigger them, for me to start looking beyond the physical side of life alone. And that is just part of my current journey. But in the Eastern spirituality, they would say that that is because of past lives I've lived, that I've somehow prepared myself for all of this in other lifetimes already. So if you recognize this for yourself, that you have a similar thing going on, then that is a great sign. That you should be, just that don't be disturbed by it. I, I know it might be a bit weird compared to most people who seemingly don't seem to have this, but it's just a sign that you will grow to watch more and more spiritual awareness and unity with God, that you're already on your way. Others are just waking up or haven't even started yet. They hear these teachings or these ideas and insights and they can either believe in them or dismiss them and it's up to them. It depends on their own state of consciousness and state of spiritual evolution, whether they are already ready for this or not. Because anyone that is not ready for it will also not go to hell forever and ever either. Even the greatest sinner will not stay in hell for all of eternity. They might be there for a long time, yes. But it all depends on how fast they can change their consciousness to watch the divine. And if they're so obsessed with doing destructive things, well then, depending on their obsession, it might take a long time. Until they finally realize there's no point in being only destructive here, it's just pointless. Let me stop doing this, let me find God and let me redeem myself. That's what very destructive souls have to learn ultimately for themselves. And that happens through these hellish realms. Where they, they themselves get so fed up of all the darkness that they are causing that they finally start to see the light. That's how this all goes. Yeah, some people would wish they would stay there forever and ever, but you gotta understand we're all brothers and sisters spiritually speaking. All souls, the offspring of the divine. Therefore no one is condemned forever, for all of eternity, to hell. Unless that is where they want to be, then they have the freedom to do so, but anyone that knows that they can pick the heavenly and have perceived the heavenly will no longer consciously decide to stick to hell. And all this is, has to do with the astral realms. So that is what it's like. The astral realm is a reflection of your own state of consciousness. The more heavenly you make and work on your consciousness during your physical journey right now, the better off you'll be. The more you perceive the unity, you learn to see it, to perceive it and feel it, the better off you'll be. The more you perceive and learn to follow destructive ideas, the worse off you'll be, you'll end up in hell. That's what it's all about. There's nothing scary about it. If you really think about it, at least to me, there's nothing scary there. In fact, I know I've done stupid things throughout my physical journey as well. It's reached a point for myself where it's like, okay, if I have to pay a price for that, if that means some hellish things have to occur to me to redeem my soul further, then I'm all up for it, man. Make me burn. I almost would say, let it burn. Because symbolically for me, that means let it burn so that I will burn out of my soul all this madness, all this negativity that I allow to be there. So it becomes symbolically a very good thing at the same time. You see, that's a totally different way of looking at burning in hell. To be honest with you, at least. But that's just for me how it is. Again, for you, it might not sound very pleasant, etc. That's okay. But I hope you take this to heart. This whole idea that the astral world is a weightless dimension. It's a peaceful, wonderful dimension. Things reflect themselves back to you instantly based on the state of your own consciousness, the more divine you learn to make yourself and your consciousness from the depths of the very being that you are, the better and more joyous and wonderful the astral realm will treat you. And then from that moment on, you can go beyond the astral realms, 
deeper and deeper into the very nature of God, with the unity of God, you'll go there automatically, because that is your destiny.